Well, Uruguay has elected a leftist candidate to the presidency after five years of conservative rule. Now, the tightly run second round race saw former history teacher and local mayor Yamandu Orsi of the left wing Broad Front Alliance come out victorious. His opponent, the centre right candidate Alvaro Delgado, conceded defeat and pledged to help his opponent with the trans a transition of power. Supporters of Uruguay's leftist opposition celebrated their party's victory in the capital, Montevideo. They voted out the conservative coalition that governed the South American country for the past five years in favor of Yamandu Orsi and his leftist broad front coalition. Many thanks to all those who made this an exemplary campaign. We achieved what we achieved and that is nothing less than triumph. <laughs> Ruling party candidate Alvaro Delgado had taken the race to a runoff, but conceded amicably after early results showed him trailing his opponent. Today, the people, the Uruguayans, defined who is going to serve as president of the republic. And I want to send from here, with all my government coalition, with all these members of the coalition, a big hug and a greeting to Yamando Orsi. Orsi, a former teacher from a working class background, has promised to lead a new left but his platform didn't promise any big shakeups to the status quo. Like his opponent, Orsi ran on pledges to fight crime linked to drug trafficking and to boost an economy that is still lagging from a COVID-19 hangover, as well as a historic drought. The broad front coalition he led to victory ruled Uruguay from 2005 to 2020, presiding over a period of economic growth and social reforms that won international acclaim. Well, earlier, I spoke with journalist Sebastian Fest, who's been covering these presidential elections in Uruguay, and I asked him why voters rejected the conservative candidate in favour of the moderate. Yes, I think that the conservative candidate has been rejected because he was not the most charismatic one. Had the current president, Luis Lacalle Pau, had the chance to run for uh, the re-election, something that the Uruguayan constitution doesn't allow, he probably would have won. But at the same time, you have to say that the uh, new president-elect, Yamandu Orsi, from the left-wing coalition Frente Amplio, is a moderate, and this is something that the Uruguayan people appreciate very much. Let's talk a bit more about the Uruguayan people. What were on uh, their minds, do you think, when, when they were voting? What were the main issues? You know, Uruguay is not a country of polarization. This is essentially a social democratic country, even if the right wing uh, rules or even if the left wing is in the government. So there won't be big changes in the way that the country has been ruled. So probably uh, not having the chance to vote for the current president uh, made some People, and you would say it's only 2% difference, so it was not a huge difference between the two candidates. They decided to uh, choose Yamandu Orsi, who is, as I said before, uh, not an extremist, but a very moderate candidate for the left wing. And, and what type of president is he promising to be? Uh, he promised in uh, his first words after his uh, success uh, to unite the Uruguayan people. He promised also to uh, try to attract the, the, the people who didn't vote for him. So Uruguay is, uh, I mean, had this uh, Alvaro Delgado, the conservative candidate, won. He also promised to uh, govern with Yamandu Orsi uh, in, the, in the first steps. So, you could say that Uruguay is always a country where you won't go to the extremes, but go to the middle, even if it's uh, the, 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 the left wing or the right wing. Let's talk about that a little bit more, because in recent times we can point to a number of countries that have put populist outsiders in power. Why hasn't that been the case here? 
Yeah, because Uruguay has a tradition of moderation. This is part of the way that the country has developed in the uh, since the, the beginning of the 20th century. So you won't find in Uruguay, for instance, a Javier Milei. Uh, you won't find in Uruguay probably also not a Gustavo Petro. Uh, they like to go to, to the center. At the same time, it's a small country. It's only 3.4 million uh, people. So it's quite easier to control than big countries like Brazil, Mexico or Argentina. Journalist Sebastian Fest in Madrid, thank you so much for your time and your insights today. Thank you very much.